Let's learn how to use Maya's tangent constraint. Maya's tangent constraint causes an object's rotation to point at tangents along a nerve's curve. So what we'll do is use it to simulate the character's brow sliding along its skull. Just to show you what we have in this scene, if I were to hide the character viz layer and show the brow patch layer and also the brow curve surfaces, we have this nerve surface that has been created with a loft. And I've used the character's mesh just to create those uh, curves a little bit faster, snapping them along the topology. Now, what we also have are an extra set of curves that have been created along our nerves patch. So this is what a few of our locators have already been tangent constrained to. Let's go ahead and hide our brow patch layer, hide the surface curves, show our character, just to take a look at the, the benefit of working with this type of brow rig. So if we were to go to slider B and start to change our value here, what we'll see is that the, the brow is not only sliding in position along what would be the character's skull, but we could also see a little bit of rotation. Now we're not limited to this movement at all because there is a, a joint in place represented by this little handle here. I'll just go ahead and show joints so you can see this. There's a little joint there that we can use to get even more control over the brow. So this is what we can think of as our base level using these, these sliders. Now to talk a little bit more about this rig before we use the tension constraint, we're using a, a point on curve info node to drive the position of our locator along the, the nerves curves. So that's what the locators lock down to. And then at that point, the joint is parent constrained to our locator. Grabbing one of our joints that are already rigged, if we were to hit the up arrow, you could see that there's a parent constraint added to the group above that joint. That way we can freely animate on top of the joint without interfering with the constraint. Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and grab our brow control and go ahead and zero out slider B. So that'll, again, give you an idea of the, the usefulness of this rig. This is a, a, a simple skull rig, of course, taking a look at the surface for a higher res character or, or one that had more realistic anatomy. You might create a, a, a more complex surface for your tension constraint. But I'll now go ahead and hide that, hide our character so we can take a look at the asset we'll use in this lesson. All right, so here we have our locator. And again, it's already been locked down by our point on curve info node. So we need to take care of orienting it along this curve. Let's go ahead and head over to our animation module Constraint, Tangent Options. Now reset the settings. Okay, so at the top we find the constraint weight, whether or not the object will be locked down by the surface it has been constrained to. Then we have our aim vector. We'll take a look at these settings because we'll need to change a majority of them to make sure our locator will work properly. So it's just a matter of grabbing our curve, followed by the constrained object, which is our locator. And let's go ahead and choose Apply. Now, you might have seen that the locator's orientation has shifted. To see this clearly, if we were to undo, grab the locator, head over to Display, Transform Display, Local Rotation Axes, now we can have a, a, a better idea of the true orientation of this object we are constraining. If we were to again grab our curve, grab the locator, and apply the constraint, again, this is a problem because the locator has shifted. We would instead want the orientation 
to not change much at all. You can see I've already tweaked the orientation of this locator so that it is oriented along this, this tangent. So I wouldn't want that to change. I want things to kind of stay the same as best as it can. So that means we'll need to change a few of our aim settings in order to have this cooperate. All right, so our aim vector, right now it's set to the positive x. We saw what that did. It caused, again, our orientation to flip. So in order for it to, to not flip, we'll need to take a look at the aim vector that is our which is our y-axis as of right now. The, the reason why that is is simply because that is the axis that is pointing down our curve. Now, it's not the positive y-axis we'll want to use, but instead the negative y-axis. That is what points down our curve we're constraining to. How do we know that for sure? Well, if we were to go ahead and grab our curve and go to component mode, Let's go ahead and select the bottommost point and take a look at our script editor. What we'll find is the, the point ID, which right now is CV5. If we were to go ahead and select the topmost point, we can see that that is CV0. So the curve's natural direction then moves down in the negative y-axis. That is why we would want to use negative y in our case in order to make sure the locator is constrained properly. All right, so let's go ahead and again grab our curve, grab our locator, and instead of, again, positive x, we'll use negative y for our aim, putting in a value of negative 1 in the y field. Now, we'll need to change our up vector. Of course, it can't be the y-axis because that is our aim vector. So naturally, it would be the z-axis. That is what's pointing up and away from our curve. So let's go ahead and use that and see what happens. So I'll go ahead and zero out the y-axis and put in a value of positive 1 in the z-field. Now, when we choose apply, notice the locator does not shift as it once did, which is really neat stuff. So you can see now, if we were to grab our brow control, go to slider A, and start to move that up the curve, everything seems to move just fine. But watch this. As we start to move down the curve, we'll eventually run into a little bit of twisting. Now, if this causes our joint to twist, of course, naturally, we'll see that in our bind. So that's going to be a problem. So what we'll need to do then is decide Another way to control the twisting of this locator, something that will allow us to have complete control over its twist axis. So here's where the smaller locators come into play. We can use these as our up vector objects. So going back to our tangent constraint, you can see underneath our world up type, we have several choices to choose from. If you'd like to learn more about how each of these work, feel free to take a look at our aim constraint lesson. But what I'm going to do is choose object up. That way we can use the smaller locator as our up vector. Why would we want to use that? Well, this has also been tied to the same point on curve info node that controls our locator. And what I've done was actually first group the, the smaller locator. And I've gone ahead and constrained that and also use the connection editor to lock down its position to the point on curve info node. That way, the smaller locator will follow exactly the way it needs to with our face rig. So taking a look at the constraint, there's an orient constraint tied to our head bone. That way, as we start to rotate the head around, again, the brow will always stay oriented properly. Okay, so with that being said, I, I then, once the group was, was set up, I then took the locator and kind of shifted it over to the side so we have something to point at. So let's say we go ahead and finish up this rig. What I'll do is go ahead and grab the locator, and I'll go ahead and get rid of its constraint. One way to do that is from our outliner, 
we'll just go ahead and frame the locator, expand it, and get rid of the tension constraint. All right, so now, grabbing the small locator, since that's going to be our up object, let's go ahead and grab its name from the channel box and paste that in our world up object field. All right, so now this will be defined as the up object. So at this point, we can grab our curve. We can grab our locator. We'll need to change the up vector direction because no longer is it the z-axis, but instead the negative x-axis, the direction that's pointing at the small locator. So I'll go ahead and set that value. Again, negative 1 in the x field. And now we can choose Add. And you can see that now, if we were to grab the brow control again, and start to move that up and down, no longer will we run into any twisting issues. Okay, really neat. So let's go ahead and finish this up. I'll go ahead and zero out slider A. We'll grab the joint that needs to be tied to this locator, hit the up arrow to get to its group. This is what holds our constraints. So the joint is free for animation. We'll go to our outliner, go ahead and frame the joint. Let's grab its group. Okay, there it is. Wonderful. All right, so at this point, we'll grab the locator, control click the group, and apply a parent constraint with maintain offset. So watch this. If we were to go ahead and show our character, select our brow control and start to move that, we're getting the the joint sliding along the skull, which is really cool stuff. And of course, we can come in, grab the joint, and deform that further to get the exact deformations we need. So in this lesson, we've learned how to work with the tangent constraint to create a really neat brow system.